You need to get it way on out there if you can. Good. It's just almost indescribable how much Johnny loves his daddy. He loves doing things with his daddy. You see him? He was trying to chase it. Did you see the fish? Yeah. A boy, a boat, and his best buddy. Yeah, that's good. But this is no ordinary son and no ordinary father. Recognition, respect. In his career, Gene Stallings has had all of that and more. But ask him, and he'll tell you his most rewarding experience had nothing to do with football. In fact, it began on what he thought was the worst day of his life. I see the doctor in the hall, and that's when he said, well, you know, uh, we think that baby's mongoloid. Uh, just about like that. They didn't use the word downs in those days. They, you know, they referred to the babies as a mongoloid child. And it was 1962. Gene's wife, Ruth Ann, had just given birth to the couple's third child, their first son. It was no secret Gene was hoping for a boy. He admits he'd already imagined his son sprinting down a football field. But that was before the doctor matter-of-factly delivered the crushing news. When he said the word mongoloid, well, it just, it just, I can't express the, the shock that went over my body. And I thought it's just because he was premature, that's the reason, and, you know, because he looked so normal, and he looked so sweet and so precious. But soon, there was no denying it. Tests confirmed that their baby boy, whom they named Johnny, did indeed have Down syndrome. And like many other children born with Down syndrome, an abnormality of the chromosomes, Johnny also had a potentially fatal heart defect, one that couldn't be corrected at the time. I didn't know whether it was best for him to live or not live or, or whether I... Are you, are you telling me that there was some part of you that thought right. perhaps it would be better if, right. if right. this and, and ended quickly? Yeah, I just didn't know. I thought, well, you know, death may be an honorable way out. That sort of went through my mind. Maybe that was the best thing for everybody. But you say to Gene, you know, I'll take care of the girls and I'll take care of Johnny. But I'll never be happy again. And I really didn't feel that I would. I didn't. Given how grim Johnny's future looked, the Stallings were urged to put their son in an institution, a fairly common practice in those days. The point being that if you put him in an institution, that you would visit him a lot early, and then less and less and less, and then after a while, it may be like you didn't even have him. And for Gene Stallings, there was something else to consider. Only in his 20s, he was already on college football's fast track, an assistant at the University of Alabama, working with the great coach Bear Bryant. There were those who said, think about your future. People mentioned to me mm -hmm. from time to time that I'm telling you this is going to affect your career. This is going to, it's going to keep you from getting that job that you want. Was there a point at which she said, well, maybe they're right. Maybe we should think about institutionalizing Johnny. We were not going to even consider that. Th that was never an option. No. The Stallings had already fallen in love with Johnny. And against all odds, they were determined to raise him at home with them. But the question that haunted them, would he ever be accepted outside the family? We knew no one else that had a child with Down syndrome. We, in fact, I don't even think we knew anyone that had a handicapped child. Our friends didn't know how to react. Sometimes they would just ignore the baby, like the baby wasn't there. It wasn't because they wanted to ignore it, they just really didn't know what to say. Walking was probably the first big victory. Uh, oh, and our two older daughters worked with him every day when they came home from school. And that still is something that we remember as, you know, as one of our happiest days. On the football field, Gene Stallings had always been known as a demanding, no-nonsense coach. Every day he worked with exceptional athletes. But he says watching his young son struggle to do something as simple as tie his shoes changed him, made him tougher on those who wasted their talent and more appreciative of the less gifted who worked hard, like Johnny. His accomplishments are little accomplishments, and I appreciate him for what he can do. We don't know how long Johnny's going to live. You know, he may live 25 years, or something may happen to him next week. But quit worrying about it.
And despite all the dire predictions and the difficulties, the Stallings say Johnny was a joy, a sweet, generous child who made his dad proud. Even so, Gene wasn't sure what to expect when he joined the Dallas Cowboys and took Johnny to his first practice. I said, now, when I introduce you to Coach Landry, you, you, you say Coach Landry, and he, he had it all down. So we took him in the dressing room, and I, I said, uh, Johnny, I wanted to introduce you to Coach Landry. And he said, hi, Tom. <laughs> I said, Johnny. You Johnny. didn't call him Tom. No, I didn't call him Tom. <laughs> we always tickled Coach Landry to death. Much to his father's delight, Johnny became the Cowboys' biggest fan. And in the often heartless world of touchdowns and tackles, his son offered some unexpected kindness and compassion. Johnny was, you know, someone that you just want to hug, and he wanted to hug you back, and he was in the locker room always picking up your spirits. I mean, he just made you feel good. He liked us whether we, we won or lost, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I had a great affection for Johnny, as, as did the other players. <laughs> Johnny has never played the game that's been his father's life. But in his own way, he's become a member of the teams Gene coached, especially the University of Alabama Crimson Tide. The trainers were so kind to Johnny. They, you know, that he would go in the training room and, and he'd take some ice and rub on a player. Now, whether or not he even had a sore or not, it really, I just had material, but Johnny thought he was helping. During Gene's years as head coach of the Crimson Tide, Johnny became almost as well known to fans as his dad. People would say, Johnny, why, why do you want to make, why do you want Alabama to win? And he'd say, it makes Pop happy. Isn't that neat? And when they didn't win, which was rare, Gene would find himself leaning on his son for comfort. Oh, boy. Uh, did I hate losing. I mean, it, just, it was just no fun in me, for me at all. But, but Johnny would have a way of sort of putting it in perspective. How would he do that? Well, just look at him. You know, uh, you know, there's a lot of things worse than losing a ball game. Despite those early fears that he'd never have a life of his own, Johnny blossomed off the field too. He made friends. He even got a job at the Bear Bryant Museum, named after the legendary coach who'd been his father's mentor. What was your job? What did you do? Oh, I can own a character. You clean the cases. When you support the United Way, you're saying to people like John, don't give up. And Johnny gained even more recognition after he and his dad made this public service announcement for the NFL's United Way campaign in 1987. The United Way, it brings out the best in all of us. Roll up! Roll! In 1996, Gene Stallings retired from football, at least for the time being. He and Ruth Ann moved back to the ranch in Texas to spend more time with Johnny. Describe your son to me. Well, first of all, he's got a one-way ticket to heaven. That's something okay. most of us don't have. He's such a joy. For example, he says this every day. He said, you know who my favorite pop is. You know, we don't want to imagine life without Johnny. The child they were told would probably not survive is now 36 years old. Johnny's heart condition has slowed him down a bit but he still obviously delights in being with his family, especially his pop. Okay, he pop, he me to hold his hand. It seems to me that your favorite thing to do yeah. is holding your dad's hand. Why? Do you like that better or more than hugging? Hugging, hugging. Hugging first, holding hands second. Yeah. Gene Stallings has co-written a book called Another Season, not only about football, oh, John, but about his son Johnny. <laughs> It's a love story, really, with a powerful message that what may seem to be a tragedy can turn out to be a blessing. Oh, man. He got off. The good Lord could take me back 36 years and say, I'm going to give you a choice. I'm going to give you a perfectly normal, healthy little boy, or I'm going to give you Johnny. You take your pick. I would take Johnny every time. I mean, I wouldn't even give that any thought. My, my life wouldn't be nearly as fulfilled and as rich without him. Can you sing Yay Alabama? Go to Alabama. <laughs> <laughs>